Hello, Blake Rudis here with another video for the On One Spring Into Summer video series. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to take this uh, sunflower that's, you know, uh, not that great looking and make it look artistically kind of wonderful with a series of textures, borders and vintage effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this sunflower image and we're going to make it look uh, more artistic. We're going to take uh, basically a not so great of a photograph and make it, you know, look artistic and have that summer type of feel to it. So before we begin in the deliverables here, you can download this. There is a follow along PDF that shows you every step that I'm taking to make this image. And there are also 15 textures that I want you to install that you can use. They are my textures, but you can have them. They're all yours. I want to share them, but I'm not going to show you how to install them till the very end because I don't want to interrupt anyone who might already know how to do that. So out here, uh, just about, I don't know, maybe 40, maybe 30 miles west of uh, Kansas City, there's a place called Grinter's Farm. Might even be a little bit closer to Kansas City than that, but I usually go out there every year and I photograph the sunflowers. So we're going to take this raw file that I provided for you and just go ahead and go into the develop module. Now in this raw file, there is a ton of data for us to work with. And I'll admit that the image that I took here might not actually be the best, but what I like about it is I like uh, the foreground element and the background with that nice bokeh and that nice blur. But it definitely needs some sprucing up in order for it to work, and it's not a throwaway. What I want to teach you in this whole spring into summer video here is that when you have an image like this where you're thinking, meh, I can't really do anything with that. You can, you just have to step into an artistic realm. You have a nice amount of data here, a nice amount of data that can work for you. So go ahead and use it to your advantage. The thing about this sunflower is it's not the most beautiful sunflower in the world. Uh, it's got some decay and it's got some um, depreciation to it, but we can use it to our advantage with some artistic development on this photograph. So let's first just get our tone right. You know me, I go tone, I go color, and then I go into artistic effects. So in tone, I'm just going to go ahead and boost up our exposure here by about 1.5. That should be good. Nice brighten up. That already looks better than it did before. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into my highlights and maybe increase those highlights a little bit because I like how that brings out a little bit more of the yellow in the flower. So I'll bring that up to about 17 or so. And then I'll go into my shadows, move those down, move those up. You know what? I think I might just leave my shadows alone. So I'll just leave that at zero and then I'll go into my whites probably bring those whites up quite a bit too because again I like how much data it gives me in the sunflower in the front now I know in the background I'm already kind of losing that to white anyway and that's fine I know there's a lot of people who are like oh that's some stark white if you look at the histogram it's blowing out up there but we're gonna use that to our advantage when we go into the effects. So don't worry about it now. Don't freak out. Say, Blake, you're crazy. Uh, you're going to see why that's important in a second. Now I'm going to go and go into my contrast and I'm going to increase and decrease my contrast a little bit. Now, because I know that I'm moving into an artistic realm with this, I want to make a very low contrast image. So I don't want a whole lot of big pits of shadows and darks in there. At the end of this, I'm going to show you how we can actually use develop in artistic ways after we get our textures on there that we're going to do in effects. So that looks pretty good there. Let's go ahead and look at the, the structure. The structure is going to give us some detail in there. That's pretty cool. Let's let's go ahead and increase that just a little bit, just not not too much. And then our haze, if we go ahead and bring that haze down, it's going to bring back some of that sky in the background. So if we go back to about negative 20, that should be okay right around there. Now I'm going to increase my color now. So I've got tone good. Now I'm going to look at color. So I'm going to go ahead and boost up the temperature. I'm just going to move this until I see something I like. I like it right around there. That's good. Nine or 10 works for me. And then the tint, I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit more magenta because of the orange that it's bringing out in the center of the sunflower. So I'll bring that up maybe a little bit more to about the 20 mark. That should be good there. Okay. And then saturation, let's bump it up and bring it down. Let's bring the saturation up just a little bit. And then the vibrance. Vibrance is going to give us some nice color in here. So that looks good as far as tone and color is concerned. Now, um, like I said before, if we were to look at the before, it already looks better than the before. I don't mind that the sky is blown out now again, because when I go into the effects, you're going to see why I don't mind that uh, to begin with. But 
Um, one of the things you're going to ask yourself when we move into effects is I'm going to do a lot of things that are going to make this image look completely different than what we have right now. But I'm going to circle back at the end and show you uh, why it's important to get this tone and color stuff correct before you move on into the effects. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into effects and we're going to put our first effect on there. Now I'm going to do a series of effects here. We're going to do kind of like an antique sandwich uh, and then in between there, we're going to have a nice layer, two nice layers of borders and two nice layers of textures. So a lot of buildup. Um, beauty is pain, right? <laughs> so some people say, man, this is painful to do all these layers. It's not. It's really uh, every layer has a purpose. So we'll just build up and we'll go from there. So if you're following along in that PDF, just go and go to add filter and press antique. Now the filter that we want to use in this antique setting is the cool one. I like how this blue is nicely washing out uh, some of the uh, very strong yellows that were coming through there. And pretty much just by default, I like what's happening with that antique um, because what I'm trying to get here is a nice washed out feel to my image anyway. And this does a great job of washing this out to give me something that I can build upon with my textures. But if you want to, you know, adjust the opacity here because you want some more of that yellow to pop through, that's fine. You can do that. I'm going to leave this at 100% with all the settings for the cool. I mainly just use this as a wash over the image. So now we're going to add another filter and we're going to go to a texture filter. So what I've done for you is I've provided 15 textures for you that I'll show you how to install at the end of this. So what I need to do is in the texture filter, you can either select a certain type of preset that's already done for you that on one has suggested here, or you can come down here into, I'm just going to go ahead and reset this to get us back to the beginning, go to the categories and the textures, and you can import your own categories and have your own textures put into here. I shoot textures a ton. I've got like, I don't know, thousands of textures on my computer. So I'm sharing 15, which is only like maybe a half of a percentage of how many textures I actually have. So what I've done is I've already created a category and that category is called summer dash rudis. And I already have a bunch of textures in here. The first texture I want you to apply if you're following along is going to be this rudis two texture. Now we're going to leave that at the mode of subtle, but you can see how you can change the different modes here. I like it set at just subtle. It works perfect and we can adjust the brightness of this texture. Now this isn't the brightness of the underlying image. This is the brightness of the texture. Now you'll notice that we got some of our yellow back uh, from uh, that antique because that antique wash washed out all of our yellows, but because this texture actually has quite a bit of yellow in it, it's giving us some of that texture, uh, that color back to our image. So I'm going to reduce that saturation just a little bit. You can bring it down to negative 100 to get some of that blue back, or you can incorporate some of the yellow in there if you want. Uh, anywhere between negative 50 and negative 100 will work. This hue shift is the hue of the actual texture that we're working with. So if you wanted to make it a little bit more on the red side or the green side, you could bring that hue up a little bit. These are all relatively subjective to, to the individual. But if we bring this hue shift up, and we drop the saturation down. What you'll notice is that it's not actually uh, doing anything now with the hue shift. You see that because with the saturation at negative 100, we're basically taking all the color out of that texture as we apply it to our image. One of the buttons that you can see here is called invert. If you press invert, watch what happens. Isn't that pretty interesting? What's actually happening with that invert button is it's um, taking all of the data that's in that texture and it's reversing it. So whatever is black in that texture will be white. Whatever is red in that texture will be cyan and so on and so forth. So we'll go ahead and press invert. And then right here you have this colorize setting where you can actually add a color to that texture. So if I were to go ahead and press colorize and shift this over into the yellow range here, I want to get a nice looking tan kind of color in this image. So I could even, if I can't find quite the color that I'm looking for here, what I can do is I can click on this color button here and select maybe um, something more in the kind of like tannish range there. And that should be okay there. And with my amount, I can bring that amount way up to 100 and that looks pretty good right there. I like that, I like the way it looks. One of the things I did tell you was that I'm gonna apply these textures to different areas of the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this textures and up here in the gear icon, I'm gonna click here and say, what do I want this to do? How do I want this to apply to my image? Well, the way I'm gonna apply this to my image is I'm gonna apply it to the highlights, just the highlights of this image. 
photo raw is basically saying your range for your highlight is a 40, but if I bring that range up, look what happens. I'm now dictating what a highlight is. Here's the other cool part. If I start moving these sliders here, this is the highlights of the highlights that I'm protecting. These are the shadows of those highlights that I'm protecting, and these are the midtones of those highlights that I would then effectively be protecting. So we'll go ahead and bring that, you know, around 36 and 64, that's good. Another thing that I have available to me is a blending option. So I could change this to darken, multiply. The thing about textures is that there are tons of different ways that you can apply a texture. And the main key ways that I think you should apply textures and borders is really gonna be in this area right here, where you're applying them to a very specific area, you're using a very specific blend mode, you're affecting the range of that area that you're applying it to, and you're protecting any of those highlight or shadow areas within that range of what you're applying it to. Now, if we change this to midtones or shadows, it would apply this texture to only the shadow areas or only the midtone areas. And you'll see how that's gonna come in when we get into the borders here. So let's go ahead and minimize this texture. We're gonna add another texture. So go to add filter and go to textures. So with this texture, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our category and in that category, we're gonna to go to summer-rudis, and we're going to select the texture number 14. I like this, it's a nice, uh, this is actually like a rusted metal type of look. It's a great texture to use on your images because it kind of gives it this like, uh, almost like paper feel, like rustic type paper feel, so I like it. We're gonna leave that mode set to subtle. We don't really need to change the tone or the color of this. I kind of like the way it is right now. Um, if we invert it, you can see a different effect. We'll leave that alone and we will not leave it inverted. But let's go ahead and go to colorize and add a very specific color to this. So to this, I wanna add like a peachish type color. Press okay. And our saturation for that peach type color, we can move that down. And the reason why I'm adding that color is that it's bringing more of that yellow back uh, through on our image. And I like the way that applies itself to the photograph. So let's go ahead and go up to our blending options and see if we want to change anything here. Uh, we might want to just come in here and maybe reduce this in our highlights a little bit so that the tops of those leaves of the, uh, the petals of the sunflower can come through. So we'll bring that up to 39 to 45, somewhere in there will be good. We're just going to and leave it the way it is at this point. I like the way it looks at this point. So that looks good. All right. So now what we're gonna do, just go ahead and minimize all these, it's easier as we work on this, is I wanna start bringing this uh, sunflower forward a little bit in more artistic ways. So I'm gonna use borders, and I'm gonna use borders in a way that apply themselves so subtly, you wouldn't even know I used the border, and that's important. So let's go ahead and click on this top layer here, this top texture layer, we're gonna add a filter, and we're gonna add a border. By the nature of them, I do not like borders, especially white borders like this, because uh, I think they distract from the image, especially when I'm looking at them online. Now a border or a frame or a mat or something like that, when it's framed is good, but digitally, I don't like them. I actually tell uh, people during critique sessions to not put borders on your image when you uh, show it to me. I just, I don't care for them. I think they distract from the photograph, but they can be used in ways that they don't distract from the photograph. So let's go ahead and go into the category, change that category to brush. And then in that category, what type of border do we want to use? Change this to brush number three. So I actually do kind of like this brush. I think it's a, a very interesting looking brush because it just kind of fades itself in almost like a vignette, but not a vignette. It's it's nice. I like it. Now, if we come down here to tone and color, because this is a white border, these settings are kind of arbitrary. They aren't going to matter because it's white. So I'm just going to go ahead and press invert and make it black. So now it looks like a really deep, thick black vignette. And I don't, I still don't like it. Okay, so I hope you're not thinking, Blake, I like this. No, I, I don't like this because um, it's, it's very restricting. It's pulling me into the photograph, but it, then it's like, hey, I'm pulling you in, but you're stuck in a box. You're stuck in this brushed box, and I don't like that. So if I come up to this gear icon, again, this, this is where On One Photo Raw shines. I can't tell you how many times I've emailed them and said, you know, I just love the apply to and all the different protection measures that you've afforded in here. It's so much so that um, between Photoshop and On One Photo Raw, they're the only programs that I use because they allow me to do these things. If there's a program or a plugin out there that does not allow you to use any type of blending modes or protection measures, I would venture to say that it's trash. Okay, I said it. <laughs> 
Um, and I'll, just to back up that, the reason why I say it's trash is because uh, you need these things. You need the power to be able to protect your image from these things. If this program just applied this border here and did not give me any way to protect my underlying image, um, it's, it's too restricting and it doesn't afford me any ability to uh, save this photograph from this border that's just attacking the sides. Okay, I'll step off my soapbox. Now, when we go to apply to, check this out. We're gonna press apply to, and we're gonna say shadows. Look at that, all right? So it's just applying itself to those shadowy areas in the image. But let's go ahead and bring up that range. Bring up that range pretty high, because now we're dictating what a shadow is in the image. And then if I come up here to the opacity, I can drop that down to about 50%. Look at how subtly that applied itself. Extremely subtle but it applied itself to the image in a way that it pulls those petals forward. So we took a border that made our image so restricting and we used some of the benefits from that border that allow things to pull things forward. We pulled some of those petals forward by pushing some of the things back. It's kind of like a vignette, but it's a creative way to do it. Let's do another one. So let's go ahead and add another border here. And with this border, we're gonna add a whole different brush to it. So I'm gonna go into the category and go to brush. I'm gonna use brush number 14. I like how this looks like, you know, someone just brushed all the edges and the sides of the image. Uh, looks, looks pretty cool like that. Now in the last one, we looked at the tone and color and we inverted it. This time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna add a color to this border. So I'm gonna go to colorize and then I'm gonna take my eyedropper and I'm gonna select an orangish yellowy color in my image, like this one right here. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that amount down a little bit so it's kind of a muted kind of color that's being added to the image. And then with the scale here, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit so that it doesn't quite, I just want the edges of this image to have that, that look to it. I don't want that big thick band. I don't want that big thick band that we have on the sides. So I'll scale it down. I'll go down to negative 13 or so. So just the outside edges get that kind of border painted kind of look. So go up to this gear icon and what are we gonna apply this to? So let's go ahead and just apply that again to just our shadow areas. Let's drop our opacity down to about, I don't know, 30 or so. So it's very subtle, it's extremely subtle. If we wanted to, we could even come in here and we could protect some of those mid-tone areas from receiving that. So that, see how that line on the bottom starts to cut right through the bottom of the petals? If we come in here and we protect our mid-tone areas, it's gonna protect those petals from this. Now we can come down here and we can go to our scale and we can maybe bring that up a little bit if we wanted to, to maybe like the negative 10 range so that you can see how that protects those uh, mid-tone areas by bringing that up. And that looks pretty good. So one more thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and look at all the stuff that I've done, go ahead and minimize all these things down so I can get a big picture. So I've got an antique, two textures and two borders, and now I'm gonna finish it off by putting a vintage effect on the top. So let's go ahead and go to add filter and we're gonna press vintage. So with this vintage, I'm going to select the red yellow vintage. I really like the way that looks and applies itself to the image. As far as the settings here, I like how these settings are just by themselves, but I want you to notice something. Watch what happens when we turn this off. You see how when we turn this on, everything gets kind of washed out a little bit? Well, I want the colors from this to apply themselves to my image. So I'm gonna click on the gear icon and change this blending mode from normal to color because what the color blend mode does is it allows the colors of this layer to apply themselves to the image, but it allows the underlying tones to show through those colors. So it basically automatically protects our highlights and our shadow areas and makes them show through through the values that they should with the colors that are being applied to the top. And one thing I might do here also is just protect some of those other mid-tone areas underneath by bringing this skin over to about 18. Now I know it says skin, but in landscape, the skin is basically gonna be your mid-tone areas. So I did say that your develop settings make a huge difference when it comes to this artistic effect, didn't I? So let's hop back over into develop. With all of those effects applied, they're happening on top of our develop settings. And you notice that we said apply to highlights, we said apply to shadows, we, we, we specified all of these different things that happened when we said apply to. So if we increase our highlights, we're increasing the areas that those effects are applying themselves to. If we increase our shadows, we're increasing the areas that those textures are applying themselves to. 
If we bring this all the way down to the blacks there, you can see how those textures start to really come through even more. You can even start to see how those borders around the sides are starting to come through even more. So while you might think it's important to get this stuff correct in the very beginning, it's also important to come back through, go back to develop and assess the things that you've done with your effects to see what you want to push and pull even more. If I bring the shadows up, look what happens. I start to lose some of those uh, textures that are applying themselves to the image because of the way I've told those textures to apply themselves to the photograph. All right, so this is really powerful stuff. And these settings are still important. If we wanted to, we could increase the, the colors that are coming through on the bottom there. Um, we could also increase the highlight purity here. We could do whatever we want to these settings afterwards. So what I suggest is that after you make all of those effects on your image, you come back through, go into develop, and you get it all set up. So let's go ahead and look at our before and after. Here's our before. Here's our after. Now, this is an image that I probably would have maybe thrown away because the data just wasn't really speaking to me. But when you want to take it to an artistic level, you can do some really interesting things with this. As a standalone by itself, this image might not be very powerful. But if you've got a series of summer related photos that you can apply these textures to, whether those textures are applied subtly or they're applied with a little bit more power, you can see how a whole series of images like this could look really great in your summer series. Now, I did say that I was going to show you how to import those textures, so let's go ahead and do that rather quickly here. So let's go over to Effects, and in Effects, we're going to, right on this top layer here, go to Add Filter, and we're going to go to Texture. In this texture right here, don't worry about all the settings that are happening right now, go ahead and press Import, and then Imports. It looks, looks intimidating, don't worry. Press the Textures button, and press Import. It's gonna ask you, what textures do you wanna import? Well, I've already saved these to the desktop here, so I suggest you save them to the desktop too. And you can see textures, Blake Rudis here. You would select all of these and you'd press open. It's gonna ask you, what category do you want to put them in? I would suggest putting them in a new category. I already called that category summer dash Rudis. So if I were to press okay right now, it's gonna go ahead and import those right into that folder. And on the side, you would see them imported in here already. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a mock-up here, just a whole different category. I'm gonna add a category and call it test import. So I can show you how this works. Press okay. And it's gonna say choose category, test import. We're gonna say okay. And then you just let it go and it does its thing. And then at the end, it'll say the import job has processed 15 items and there were no errors. Press close, press close. So now when we go to this category here, and we scroll down to test import, you can see where all of those textures imported themselves into. Now I labeled that test import because I already had this one set up that was summer dash rudis, okay? So it doesn't matter to me what category you call it, you can call it my, my textures, you can call it whatever you wanna call it, just as long as you have those textures in there so that you can use them on your images. So we'll go ahead and delete this. And here's our before, here's our after. So again, I'm Blake Rudis. This was your On One Spring Into Summer. This is the second video I've done for this. It was a whole lot of fun. I'm um, going back to Grinter's Farm here probably in September, so I should have some more sunflower pictures to share. I certainly hope that after watching this tutorial, you've got a better understanding of how to use the textures and borders in subtle ways to add artistic effects to your images.